Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 19th, and it is Father's Day, so very happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. I hope you're uh, having a great day, and kids are uh, giving you ties and cards with ducks on them, and then you're going out mowing the lawn, which is what I remember Father's Day being like <laughs> when I was a kid. I used to always joke that, you know, Mother's Day is like this national holiday where with mandatory brunch and parades and Father's Day you, you get a tie that you'll never wear and you get sent out to mow the lawn but we're guys we we do those sorts of things because because we love them so anyway if you're a dad hope you have a great one if you're not a dad hope you have a have a wonderful day as well I'm planning to have one um, I'm going to call my dad later today and chat with him I chatted with him on Wednesday because it was actually his 78th birthday, so you know, I'm very happy about that and he's doing well uh, You know really really blessed to, to still have him uh, And uh, it was it was great catching up with him and I look forward to talking to him this afternoon. So let me a Bit of a relay got my Bing's favorite with haunted bookshop uh, still using this Cornell and Deal lighter. I really, really like this lighter a lot. It's going to be in the collection for sure. So, I know I, I said I was going to do some um, some vacation stories, and I do have a couple stories I want to tell, but I had something happen yesterday that just got me so aggravated that I thought, oh, i got to talk about this for my own psychological health. And uh, we'll, we'll do vacation story next week. Because uh, i got to do a little plan there, get some pictures and stuff uh, set up for it. And I did yesterday because I've been working on this darn Rubbermaid bin rack that I'm building. And it is going to get finished today. Um, I've got all the wood cut. I've got most of the holes screwed. I'm putting it together with uh, Craig pocket screws, which are wonderful for building shop type fixtures. They, they're very strong, very, very good, strong joints. Joints you couldn't make if you were making furniture. Um, but for this kind of stuff, it works great. So I've got most of those prepped. I just have to make the legs now. They're all cut. I just have to drill holes and put some supports on them and stuff. And uh, then it all just screws together. So this should be done today. But yesterday, I, I needed some more uh, wood. I'm using a two by three fur lumber that I'm getting at uh, Home Depot. And it's the cheapest stuff I could find that I could build this out of. And really that's all that matters. You know, it's gotta be strong enough, which fur is certainly strong enough. And it's gotta be inexpensive because this is just a piece of shop shelving. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be made out of mahogany and pine, uh, just made out of pine. Mahogany and maple. There we go. So anyway, I go over to Home Depot and I'm still kind of baffled by the cost of these these boards. I think they were they're close to five dollars each, which is just unbelievably expensive for for fur. But that's the world today. But if I'm going to spend that much. I'm going to get a board that is relatively straight. Um, I don't care about knots, but I don't want like rough edges, uh, knots that are taking big chunks out of the board, stuff like that. So if you've been into Home Depot, and I'm sure most of you have, the, the lumber is in racks. And I put a picture at the front of this video to you know, typical Home Depot lumber rack. Um, the one I need to access is about it's this second rack, so it's about four feet off the ground, so it's coming up to about my chest. And that's fine, you know, I can, I can handle it, but there's at least two feet of lumber stacked up on it, so, you know, I'm reaching up to get the stuff. And to make matters worse, the idiots that shop at Home Depot, and uh, I'm sorry, these people, the people that did this are just flat-out idiots. They go and they pull it off the board and they go, oh, I don't like this one. And they set it down and then they, they go through and, they, and you know, they collect the two boards that they want, put them on their trolley. 
And then they take all this crappy wood and they pile it up right in front. So there's like a two foot pile, maybe, um, well, it's, 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 it's about two foot high and let's say maybe about three boards wide, three boards deep into the shelf of pure crap. I mean, these are boards that honestly I couldn't use. It's not that I'm being picky, but they have big chunks taken out of them. They, the, the, instead of being square, one of the edges uh, is just, you know, completely missing because it was a live edge on the board or something. Uh, just, and, and wacky curves that look like you could make a, you know, a, a bow and arrow bow out of them with, <laughs> without bending anything. And I have to get behind this to get the wood that I want. Now, this is difficult for me. Now, I'm not the man I used to be, but I can handle a two by three. But I got to reach up. I got to reach back, you know, so I'm leaning over. I'm grabbing these boards and I got to slide out eight foot of board behind me. And then without hitting anybody or anything behind me and then get it out and bring it forward again and look at it. And I'm doing this. I only need five boards and you know but it's taking a really long time because it's so awkward and it's so hard to get this and as I'm doing this I'm pulling a board out at this time I'm, you know, my hands are fully occupied I hear a voice behind me and there's not the store is not very crowded and I hear this voice behind me clearly directed at me and he says hey you digging a tunnel and he continues to walk past me, and I see that it's a Home Depot employee. So, as the rage is building, the first thing that came to mind was to shout back at him, No, the tunnel was already there, I'm just making it a bit wider. And he laughed and continued to walk away. I... I was almost angry enough that I was just going to walk out of the store at that point, but I really wanted the wood and I already had three boards, so I just found the next two and I left. But oh, it's just been, been burning me since this happened because yeah, this guy's an employee at a store that I'm shopping at. I'm his customer. I'm sure it's somebody in that store's job to make sure that this lumber rack doesn't look the way it looked when I walked in there. What I'm doing is dangerous. That lumber could have fallen one way or the other and my hand could have been in there and it could have crushed my, my hand or my arm. It's dangerous to other customers because of the way I have to do this. I can't see behind me and I could you know, knock somebody in the head. And this guy's reaction to this situation is to laugh and to, to crack a joke as he walks by. Not, not a, can I help you? Do you need any help with that? Boy, we got to get this lumber rack in shape. Sorry about that. No, just crack a joke and walk by. I'm telling you, service is dead. I mean, it, how that can... I don't understand that, how that could happen. You know, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm old-fashioned. Maybe I'm, you know, expecting too much of people. But my God, I'm a customer. You're an employee of the store. And you see me struggling. Oh, it's not my department. Well, then call somebody. You know, go tell somebody, hey, there's a guy over there that needs help. Ask me if, you, if you'd like me to go and call somebody for you. You know, or just say, are you okay? No, nothing. Just a joke and laughter. So, we're... You know, when I, I, so my first real job was I, I worked at a McDonald's and I did that a lot. I, I worked there, you know, all the way through high school and actually a little bit of time in college off and on. You know, I worked in different places, but it was a way to, to make some money. Uh, I actually managed uh, McDonald's for a while and uh, for several years I, I managed their, uh, their closing shift so I could go after, after college. Uh, if I had an employee that worked that did something like that when I was managing, if I did something like that when I was on the crew, I would have been fired that day on the spot. You don't treat your customers like that, no matter what they do. 
No matter how crappy they are to you, you provide them with service and kindness and a smile. And it's hard sometimes, I know. But we shouldn't tolerate. We really shouldn't because it's only going to get worse. While I was on vacation, we were staying at a very nice hotel, a hotel that we've stayed at for, I believe, four years in a row now. Well, not in a row, because we didn't go for two years during the whole COVID debacle. Uh, but, you know, for about three years, we went there, and then we decided to go back this year, and we chose the same hotel because it's, it's wonderful. You know, great, great hotel, great location, right on the beach. And the service was always good. So we check in and uh, get our room keys. And as we're walking away from the check-in desk, the man that checks us in says, "Oh, by the way, if you'd like you, your uh, if you'd like clean towels, you have to call housekeeping." And I said, "Well, like there's not clean towels in the room now." He said, "Yeah, yeah, they're they're clean. But if you want additional clean towels." And I thought, this is odd. So I said, well, is housekeeping going to clean the room every day? And he said, no. If you want them to clean the room, you can call them. But they won't clean it until you leave. And they won't replace the towels or the linens until you leave. And we were there for four nights. That's their policy. And my wife and I are going to have a fight about this eventually because she would go back there. I won't. You know, I, I, I won't. I, maybe I'll call them and say, does your housekeeping clean every day? And my wife says, oh, well, they don't have enough people. Well, hire people. You know, and I saw a lot of housekeepers, you know, when it was, when people were checking out in the morning on the days we were there, they were there cleaning the rooms. So they have them. Well, they can't, they can't find people. Well, you know, and it's part of this craziness where I appreciate it's complicated. You know, they can't find people. Well, you, you're, not, you're probably not paying your people well enough because other people are, you know, people need jobs. They're out there. They need jobs. So why aren't they working for you? Well, you're not paying them well enough or you're not treating them well enough. And I, I understand that right now, there's some craziness with inflation and wages and everything and, you know, the minimum wage nonsense. So it's getting harder and harder for hotels to attract cleaning staff because those people are getting higher paying jobs doing something else. I get it. But you know what? Your service industry. You got to You got to understand that. And... As much as I believe that in, in capitalism, sometimes the bottom line has to suffer in order to provide the product that people are going to want to buy. And this is a case where your product includes service. And if you're not providing that service, I'm not going to buy it. So, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm clearly in a bit of a, a rage right now. But that Home Depot guy, he's, he's lucky I didn't have the 2x4 off the shelf in my hands. Just say that. The 2x3. I... Just a disclaimer, I would not hit Home Depot staff with a 2 by 3 <laughs> Never thought I'd have to say that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. I'm going to calm down now. Thank you for letting me uh, <laughs> rant about that for a bit because it was really bothering me. And I look forward to your comments because I'm sure that many of you have had similar situations. Maybe some of you think I'm nuts. Maybe some of you think that's the way life is now. I'd like to hear from you too. If that's the way life is now, we're, we're in a sad state. I shouldn't say that's the way life is now. It is that way. The question is, is it the way life should be? All right. Rest of the day. Well, got a lot of weeds to deal with. Got to brush the dogs. 
wife's away, so I gotta cook for myself. I'm thinking about making uh, some spaghetti sauce and pasta tonight. Haven't had that in a while. My wife is, she doesn't do well with tomato sauce. She's got the acid bothers her. And she's found this Raoul's natural tomato. No, no, actually she's not using that anymore. She found another one. Ridiculously expensive, but she can eat it and it's tomato sauce, so I, I like it. Uh, but I miss, you know, the way I make sauce is sort of the, the old Italian way with the sausage and meatballs and, you know, cook it for a long time. And, uh, she doesn't like that. She's weird. Plus, she can't tolerate gluten um, yet. She may be able to, to build back up to that. But, you know, she went on this functional medicine exclusion diet. We both did. Uh, and I... You know, I highly recommend it. It's, it's called, it was the AIP Paleo Diet. We did that for 90 days, and then we started to reintroduce things. It's great because, it, you know, I found out I'm sensitive to things that I didn't know I was sensitive to. And now I can avoid those, and I feel good. Uh, one of the things she's sensitive to is gluten. So we have to watch what we eat, and, you know, obviously pasta is a bit glutinous. You can get gluten-free pastas, but they're not very good. So anyway, that's what I think I'm going to have for dinner, which means I got to go to the grocery store. I also have to get some more pocket screws, so I'm going to have to go back to Home Depot. I'll just take deep breaths and avoid the employees. I'll brush the dogs. That'll calm me down, play with them for a little while. It's a nice day. It's going to be... 70 something sunny so very nice day and that's that so i hope you're having a wonderful sunday uh if you're a dad i hope your father's day is a good one you get to spend time with your your family and, and loved ones and uh, i hope you all have a fantastic week ahead i'll be back friday with uh with the live stream at 8 p.m eastern uh, maybe we'll do something in the middle of the week. You never know, but I'll definitely see you on Friday night. So until then, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.